Hey, what's up, worship teams, pastors, and friends? Thanks so much for coming back to the Worship Team Training Video Podcast. I'm Brandon Dempsey, and it's so great to have you. We have Eleni Young that's sitting here with us, and today we're going to be talking about how vocalists improve practice fast. And so you're going to be hearing a bit from her, as noted in the last video recording that we had. More episodes are coming down with more guests. Can't wait to feature them as we talk about guitar, bass, keyboards, drums, and so forth. But today we are talking about vocals and it's so awesome to have Eleni Young who has been a singer songwriter and been doing that for quite some time, worship leader at her local church. And she has her own music site, which we're gonna to get to that at the end of the broadcast because you need, you need to check out her music and the new releases that she's got going on. And also she is a local worship leader at her church in the Alberta, Saskatchewan area, New Hope Church. It's great to have her today. Eleni, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Awesome. Well, we are excited and having you. So thanks so much for accepting the invite. <laughs> Anytime, really. So when it comes to vocalists and improving their practice, I mean, maybe that's kind of a, um, to put both those words together could be oxymoronic in a way because it's very common right for us to think well you know i really don't need to practice but then when we find ourselves in that moment to lead worship or go into rehearsal we think oh man what do i do i don't have it all together so mm -hmm. what do you say about that i think that in a lot of ways your vocal range your vocal health actually stems from what you do with your own body and how you take care of your own body health wise. So, um, because your vocal cords, this section of your body is small, you are at the mercy of what you eat. And especially because you're, you know, this is in the same area as where your food goes. So if you are eating a high inflammatory diet, so that is rich in uh, dairy, gluten, sugar, um, any foods that really causes your body to become inflamed, um, you are pretty much setting yourself up for a harder time improving right off the hop. Uh, the key would be to drink water, drink lots and lots of water. Um, you want to make sure that you're drinking like a lukewarm water as opposed to cold because um, cold actually shocks all of this. So if you're going into rehearsal and you're chugging cold water, you're doing yourself a disservice. That's not what you should be doing. Um, in the same token, drinking like hot coffee or hot tea, actually coffee and um, uh, caffeine in itself is an inflammatory. So you should stay away from drinking coffee, even like for the morning of rehearsal, like wait till after. Um, it is a shock to your vocal cords. So I know that this sound, you're like, oh, wait, but what about the warm up? What about, but this is actually the key to having a successful warm up and a successful um, worship set is just, and being confident really in your own voice, it's having um, care for your vocal cords, for your body as a whole. And that does start with your diet, your exercise, your all that good stuff and your water consumption, most importantly. So I think to set yourself up for um, improvement right off the hop, you're going to want to make sure that you are eating a diet that is low in. I'm not saying you have to restrict all this stuff, but try to avoid when you can donuts and ice cream. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself and having all the things, but just know that that will set you back, or at least it won't put you ahead. Um, eating rich leafy greens and, uh, some grass fed meat, all that good stuff. Like that is really where it starts as far as getting to rehearsal and being able to, you know, just start singing this ridiculous range on the fly. I think that your voice does need to be warmed up. Just like if you were going to exercise at the gym, it's probably not smart for you to just grab a gigantic weights bar, whatever you call that thing and throw it on your shoulders and go for it. You're going to pull something. So um, doing a good warm up, you can find free warm ups. Um, one of my favorite uh, vocalists is Jeff Mathena. You can find his yeah. stuff. He actually has a podcast. You can find his warm ups there. Um, just Googling, YouTubing any vocal warm up. I think that's great. Starting with that before you go into a worship set is awesome. In our setup, we have actually two services. One of them is early in the morning. The other one is just after. So the thing, the mistake that I've been making for a long time is I'll use that first service as sort of a warm up, and I'm there and I'm just like, praise God for the blood, you know, and it's just this 
these people are getting, you know, the worst version of me and they'll never, you know, unless I'm warming up, they're never getting the best version of my voice and your congregants, your church family, they really do deserve the best version of your voice. And that starts with warming up. So I would say those two things, taking care of your body and your diet. And then of course, warming up beforehand would probably be your best bet to improving for sure. And I, and I just want to say that probably more than half of the vocalists watching right now just fell silent when you said no coffee before. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. That's Listen, a- <laughs> I love coffee. This is not there coffee, but I'm, I'm here for that. I think like you can drink all the coffee that you want, but just make sure that maybe you wait until after service to have your first cup of coffee on a Sunday morning or um, have a black coffee in the morning. Like don't load it with sugar and cream. I think that would be like my best piece of advice, I think, because coffee is an inflammatory dairy, sugar, inflammatory. It's like, don't do that to yourself. So early in the morning, <laughs> that's right. Um, what do you say about keeping, um, what do you do if you have coffee, um, or if you feel dryness, what do you do to keep your vocals hydrated? Well, uh, like I kind of mentioned, it is sort of a long-term thing. Um, if you have dry vocals, it's actually rooted in just being dehydrated. So you should have been drinking water, a lot of water before your set, probably for a week before, like you should just constantly be drinking water and you should be able to avoid the dry vocals. If you are finding that your vocals are dry, I would recommend like one of my favorite things that I'll drink just on a regular basis, even if I don't need it is the throat coat tea. I know that that is sort of a, a gem in the vocal community. And it's not a fix all at all, but I think if I find that it does help, um, you know, even just the morning of, instead of having a coffee or even a regular chai, English breakfast, whatever, have a, th- a throat coat tea. It's got all the things it's lemony. It's good. Um, and that does help your vocal situation. Uh, it gets rid of the coating regardless of what it's called. Um, and I think it does hydrate as well because it's, it's water-based. So you can't go wrong with that. Awesome. All right. So let's dive into more things like when we're talking about vocals themselves, how do you improve fast? And that would be to anything, you know, what, what, what goes off in your mind when you think about how to improve vocals fast? I think that you have to consider the fact that it's like an instrument and you can't learn anything overnight and you're, and because it's rooted in muscle memory, you're not going to re-memorize if that's the word overnight. Um, if you are on the schedule to sing, this is a move and you have to hit that super high note and you have a week, like that's not enough. You have to be able to improve on your range over time. And that starts honestly with doing range warmups, range exercises. Again, you can find all of those free resources online. Um, I do have a couple people in mind that offer some courses and I've taken them and I love them so much. Um, but in truth, you can get this information for free. Um, you just don't get the one-on-one and the, the personal development stuff. But, um, I think in order to improve quickly, or I think it's just doing something every day, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of doing it on Sunday morning only, or midweek Bible study only, like make sure that you're doing a vocal warm up or vocal exercises every day. Um, I don't do them every day. I should, (laughs) but I have a life right now that does not include, like, I like to leave time for prayer and devotion in the mornings, not vocal fry or, you know, screaming at the top of your lungs. But so let's go there if we can, because, um, you, you hit on some, you hit on two things that were very important. First of all, um, it, it is very difficult, uh, to think that I can improve my vocals fast. So really what you're bringing us is it's more of an everyday, the more of maybe how can you prove fast would be fast in your mind to think of the points that you just said and to bring us into the situation where we know it's an everyday process like you were talking about. Secondly, okay. if it's an everyday process and you just said the second thing, we're just, t- we're just talking about our children before we got into the video, you have a life. You have other things Mm -hmm. and and other singers right now are just nodding their heads like, yeah, that's me. I don't have time. (laughs) What do you say to singers and musicians alike that can balance that better? Well, like anything in this life that is worth having, you just need to carve out some time. Um, 
because we're talking about our voice or an instrument or whatever, maybe it's not something that you do first thing in the morning because, you know, your family's sleeping, you like to sleep in, you know, it's just not ideal. If you live alone, like you can have Adder unless you live in an apartment, in which case I probably wouldn't. But if you have the opportunity, you know, and it's just, it can be something quick. It could be like a half hour between meetings or, you know, go in your car at lunch hour instead of going to McDonald's or wherever, whatever you do at lunch hour and just sit in your car, eat a sandwich and do some vocal fry and some range uh, warm ups and exercises. And like, it's just the littlest things. And just like doing something every single day improves. If you don't do anything for a long time or for, you know, every single day consecutively, you actually get worse your muscle memory collapses, your range gets smaller. And, um, I I've actually experienced this, uh, in 2019. Yeah. The summer of 2019, um, North of us, we had an insane fire and it, it, Mm. uh, it pretty much took out anything in its path. It was huge. And we, where we lived, it actually rained ash for a long time. Like it was pretty intense. Um, I am allergic to smoke and I lost my voice for three months. Like I literally had no singing voice. I hardly had a talking voice. It was horrible for three months. And then at the very end of um, that time, I was starting to get my voice back. It was August and uh, I was supposed to be singing at uh, NAYC, a little event that takes place in St. Louis, a little, it's a huge event that takes place in St. Louis. I was asked to sing an original song in front of about 40,000 people. And it was so bad. It was so bad. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that, that it's not, it wasn't recorded, at least not to my knowledge. Like I can't find it online anywhere. Yeah. It was so bad. And that honestly, that was the first time that I had sung in three months. And from that point on, I had to work so hard to get my voice back up to speed. And it wasn't because I wasn't working on it. It's because I just couldn't you know, so, um, if, if you are just so busy, if you have so much going on and you just can't dedicate any time to your voice, you're going to lose your range. You're going to lose your, your ability. So, I mean, just doing something every day, I think is important for me. It's worship. I worship every single day in one way or another. I'm not doing any formal vocal warmups or exercises, but I just worship. And that helps my voice get used to singing every single day. I'm singing Mm -hmm. something, right? Mm -hmm. So starting with that, and then, you know, taking it from there, doing something every single day. um, I think that will in turn and in time, uh, develop your voice. It'll make it better. It'll widen your range and it'll make you a better worship leader as well. That's awesome. I mean, what could be better worshiping while you practice? So mm. there you go. Um, Nothing better. yeah, I, absolutely. That, that is great. Um, Melanie, uh, can you talk about like you, like what's your story? Oof. How much time do we have? Well, I'll give you the nutshell. <laughs> wherever you want to go. I'll give you the nutshell. Um, I was raised in a, uh, um, 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 I was raised in the home of an alcoholic and my dad, he was an alcoholic. He passed away in June of 2020 from cirrhosis of the liver, which is basically you have drank yourself to death. Um, my mom owned a restaurant, um, along with her parents And so she worked all the time. So I was, um, I was left to my own devices a lot. I, my dad was away. He would work shift work, um, on the rigs. We live in Alberta. So that's a huge part of our economy is the oil. We're like the Texas of Canada. Yeah. (laughs) And so, um, he's working rigs. Mom was working all the time. I had some serious anger problems that were rooted in years of just abuse. And uh, I was given this piano when I was eight years old. It was this little Yamaha keyboard. And um, I had been in piano lessons since I was three at that point, but I really didn't understand. um, It was, you know, it was just going to piano practicing throughout the week. Like it wasn't this creative outlet for me. It was more like my mom's forcing me to be here. So I should probably. And so that was the first time that I had felt like I had some creative liberty. You know, I could take the time and I could play on my piano and I could smash on my piano and I could play pretty things. And and it was all in my room and it was all in the comfort and privacy of my own space. 
Um, up until that point, we had like a big acu acoustic piano, which is now in my living room. But it, you know, if I wanted to play piano, everybody was at mercy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would always loved writing, writing stories and poems and stuff. And uh, I just put the two together really over time. And um, I had this really crazy radical salvation experience when I was um, in my, I think I was 17 at the time. Uh, my boyfriend at the time invited me to his church. Um, I fell in love with God. I truly did. I didn't love his church. I didn't love the people that went to church with them. I loved him. I loved his family. And I loved God. I just loved this worship. I loved what I saw. I loved what I heard. And um, we're married now. We have two kids. And I've just basically awesome. taken my love for music, my love for uh, writing, and my love for the Lord. And and now I'm here. That was the nutshell version. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. And it's really cool. I've had some incredible opportunities to write with some crazy talented people. Um, I, I love traveling and um, being able to be in the room with some gifted writers and artists. Um, I find that more often than not, I am always the least qualified person in the room. And I think that that's one of the most important things that's helped me grow. Um, I've just always sort of chased sure opportunities to grow and learn. And, and I would encourage you, you know, if you're listening and, and watching, if you have the opportunity to be the least qualified person in a room, I would just say to grab onto that and go, because you are never going to get better. If you're always in an echo chamber, or if you're the very best on your team or whatever, like you're only going to be as good as yourself. So, um, that was sort of how I've gotten to where I am today is just becoming, um, the worst person in the room in terms of skill in every single way. And I've learned and I've grown and I've been able to create with them and it's been really cool and enriching. So, um, yeah, now here I am. <laughs> Very cool. That's great. And Eleni, you have a lot of music that you've been putting out. Uh, you have some new stuff that's happening. Can you tell us about that? And also where can people find it? Yeah. Um, I, I've been trying to release a single every three months. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really fun. Um, I just released one in December, December 3rd, we released worthy is the lamb with Nathan and Rachel French. We wrote that together. Um, phenomenal writers, phenomenal artists. It was really fun to record that one. Cool. Um, and then coming up on April 1st, I have, a song coming out with Ricardo Hatfield. Now, if you don't know Ricardo Hatfield, you need to, he is Canadian, which makes awesome. him super awesome. Um, he is one of the best vocalists I have ever heard. And mm. I'm saying that, I mean that you guys have got to check him out. Um, yeah. We have a song coming out April 1st. We are going to be doing a music video for it in just a couple of weeks here. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a big one. It's really fun. It's bumpy. It's popping. And it's going to be exciting. I feel like the songs I've released so far have been very ballady. This one's going to be fun. So April 1st, watch for that one. <laughs> and where can people find it and your music? Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, um, pretty much anywhere that you can get music these days. I go through a distributor called DistroKid. So they put it everywhere for me. So I can't even tell you where exactly it is, but I can tell you that it's not anywhere. <laughs> they, uh, they put it everywhere. It's Deezer, there's Tidal, Pandora, all these ones that I don't really use, but there it's out there as well as YouTube. Uh, I have a couple music videos I put out. And like I said, I do have another one coming out soon as well. So you'll find all that at Eleni Young Music. Um, you can find my website, eleniyoungmusic.com or just Eleni Young if you're searching me up on pretty much anywhere else. Awesome. Well, we have the links right in here. And um, guys, you got to check out the new album, new stuff that she is doing. Eleni Young also, of course, what she said, April 1st, be sure to check that out and go to her sites. And I've uh, just been loving the stuff that you've been putting out on Instagram. So uh, it's a blessing to have you here share your heart and thanks so much for helping us as vocalists to remember and to learn new things that we can be doing to improve fast so thanks so much for being here today awesome thank you so much for having me all right you bet eleni thanks and guys uh, we thank you for coming here to worship team training video podcast be sure to check out the audio podcast that you can find that anywhere on all everywhere that you get your podcasts 
uh, with new seasons and events coming. So thanks so much for being here. We love you. And we'll see you back here next time soon. Bye.